Hi everyone, and welcome to the first custom episode of the Matchbox Restoration channel. In this episode I'll be customizing a 45B Ford Corsair into a banger racing car. I was a bit hesitant about doing a custom Matchbox video, because after all, this channel is called Matchbox Restoration. But because I received a lot of positive feedback from my subscribers, I decided to give it a go. The reason I want to customize this model into a banger racing car goes back to my youth. As a 5 year old, my parents took me to autocross events because we had someone in the family that had a racing team. Here you see me sitting on one of the cars, fully dressed in the orange team color. So this custom has a nostalgic feel to it. I hope you will enjoy. I start by removing the two rivets that secure the base onto the body. For this model I use only one drill bit, the 4mm one. Once I drill away enough material, the base is ready to come off. Underneath the base I found a suspension tab, a piece of fabric that has probably been sitting there for a couple of years already and a very nice looking interior. Of course, it will need some cleaning, but it looks in very good condition. The window unit gets removed by drilling out the rivet that holds it. I use the same 4mm drill bit for this. The window unit itself is scratched a lot, but I keep it for a future restoration of another model 45B I have laying around. I then remove the wheels and axles by grinding away a small lip at the end of the axles with my Dremel tool. On this particular model the wheels are running free, so the axle can move freely while grinding. This makes it a lot easier to work on than on models where the wheels are stuck on the axle, mostly by rust forming on the axle. No time to lose, let's move on to the paint stripping part. I apply some paint stripper to the body with a brush. This model was repainted before, so it will probably take some effort to get all the paint off. You can see when I try to remove the paint with my toothbrush, a lot of it simply doesn't come off the body. After a couple applications of the paint stripper, I eventually put the model in a glass jar together with some caustic soda. You might have seen it in the previous episodes, where I had several models in one jar while paint stripping them. When the paint is removed, I clean up the body with a soft metal brush mounted on my Dremel tool. A couple of my subscribers mentioned that this type of brush is still a bit too abrasive. I'm currently looking for a brass model for my future restorations. I always appreciate some good advice. It might take a while to see it applied in my videos, but that's because I'm usually working on a couple of restorations at the same time. The interior is in very good shape, but it's in need for some cleaning. I put it in some hot soapy water for a couple minutes and after that I clean it with a soft toothbrush. To give the model a banger racing look, I cut out some metal parts that resemble door panels. I tap the backside of the panels with a nail to create indents that will resemble the screws that hold the door panels. If you're wondering where I got the metal from, it's coming from a shielding plate of a broken video transmitter I had laying around. It has the right thickness for the job. After all parts are fabricated, I assemble them one by one with the help of some fine tweezers and super glue. I start with the panel that prevents dirt flying into the driver. The super glue works fast, so I have to make sure to fit it in the right place. After a few seconds, the piece is glued onto the body. Then I fit two small door panels on the passenger side of the car. Once again, they need to be fitted in the right place. There is just enough time to tilt them a bit, but after a few seconds it sits firmly onto the body.
the driver's side gets one big door panel. I'm not making these things up. If you check out British banger racing cars, that's how they look. A lot of the time these cars have custom bonnets to prevent them flying open during races. They usually fit the bonnet into these parts in the corner and use screws to secure them onto the engine bay. Again, I'm not making this up. I finish this part by securing the roof in on top of the body. This model originally has a tow hitch in the back. I'm not going to put it back on this custom. That's why I need to get rid of the space where the tow hitch was sitting before. I use some glue and baking soda to fill up the gap. While the glue is drying, I'm going to remove the license plate on the back of the body, as there is no need for a license plate on a banger racing car. I simply file off the numbers and letters with a small file. It does take a while, but apart from that it's an easy job. As I said before, I'm not going to put the tow hitch back into place, so I simply cut that part away from the interior. I go over the cut off part with my file to file off the sharpest edges. After the glue has hardened out, I start filing off the excess material to form the bumper. I got a lot of advice to improve this method in my latest videos, but I already started this project earlier on, so you probably see the advice applied in one of my next restorations. When the excess material is filed off, the result looks quite good. Now that all the bodywork is done, it's time to apply a primer coat onto the body and base. I'm using the Tamiya White Surface Primer, as this will give me a nice and bright color when painting later on. It covers the small imperfections and yet it keeps all fine details visible. When the base coat is dry, I can continue painting the body. I start by applying a light coat of paint, followed by some thicker coats. I do this until I get a nice and even finish on the body. Next up is the interior, which I'll be painting flat black to add to the banger racing look. As you might have seen already, I added some roll cage type of bars behind the front seats. I simply used some paper clips and super glue for the roll cage. The flat black covers the bright red rather well, so after a couple of coats the interior is ready to dry. 
You probably noticed that I didn't paint the roof of the body. That's because I'm going to paint it flat black too. I masked the rest of the body with some Tamiya masking tape, together with some larger pieces of masking tape I had laying around. This is the first time I'm doing a two-tone paint job, so I hope it comes out okay. When the roof is painted, I paint the roof fin with the X2 white Tamiya acrylic paint. I apply the paint with a brush to get the rough look of a banger racing car. The white color is also part of the rules. Without winning any type of races or championships, you can't have another color of roof fin. The finish on these cars is quite rough, because it usually only lasts one race day. I made some decals myself with the number 251, the number I use for my own RC banger racing cars. I first cut the decal to the correct size with some scissors. While I put the decal in some water, I apply a couple of drops of water on the part I want to put the decal on with a cotton bud. This will allow me to move the decal after I apply it to onto the body. It looks like the decal paper is a bit thicker than the one I buy off model supplies in the UK. I might add some microsol solution to the decal to smoothen the edges. The last step before putting the model back together is putting the wheels and axles back onto the base. I use my drill press for this. With a custom made tool, I press a new small lip on one end of the axles to prevent the wheels coming off. A lot of people ask me about this custom tool, so I'll try to make a video on how to make one yourself soon. And that's it. This model started as a plain Ford Corsair covered in a thick layer of white paint. After applying some custom parts to the body to create the banger racing look, I present to you, in a custom reveal, my first Matchbox Custom. Please let me know what you think and hit the subscribe button to get notified when I'm uploading a new video. Also keep your eye on the community tab of my channel where I let you know what I'm working on. And as always, thank you for watching.